We begin with new details tonight about the Denver police officers who were on Larimer Street during the police shooting last weekend. It's information that Denver police tried to keep out of public view, redacting it from documents about the shooting. They also haven't shared the injuries of the five bystanders who were hurt that night. Nine News reporter Kelly Rinke spoke to another woman who says she helped someone who was shot. Kelly? Yeah, we've now spoken to two witnesses who saw different bystanders suffering from serious injuries after that shooting. Both of them were near Larimer Beer Hall when police say three officers fired their guns at a 21-year-old man. Police say he had a gun and pointed it at them. This is video shortly after that shooting. Abriana Banks is standing nearby. She says she was in front of a food truck when she heard multiple shots. Then a young woman came up to her saying she had been shot in the arm. Abriana took her to a parking lot and tried to stop the bleeding with a t-shirt. This is a picture from another witness showing a second woman on the sidewalk. She's bleeding pretty badly. We only know about the extent of their injuries because people who were there are talking to us. DPD has not released that information. Abriana still has a lot of questions about why multiple officers fired their guns on a crowded street would honestly ask what protocol is when there is um, a crowd around, you know, like it's almost common sense not to shoot into a crowd or a crowded place. Um, and just wondering if there was another way they could have contained the situation instead of hurting innocent people. Police say the 21 year old suspect pointed a handgun at officers and it does not appear the man fired his weapon. We were able to get an unredacted copy of court documents that show the names of these officers involved. All five of them are relatively new to the department. The most veteran officer joined in 2017. The city has denied our request for the body camera footage of the incident. We are expecting police to share updates in a press conference as early as tomorrow. Guys. We're hearing from so many people. They have a lot of questions to answer, Kelly. Yeah, hopefully we get some more answers soon. Thank you. The president of the board of Adams 14 school district is resigning as the struggling school district is ordered to reorganize. Ramona Lewis is leaving with more than a year left on her term. The district didn't explain her reasoning. Adams 14 has struggled to meet state standards for years. Back in May, the state board of education approved a plan to start reorganizing the district, and that could mean having other districts absorb some schools and dissolving Adams 14 altogether. The Adams 14 board will appoint someone to the open board seat and then they'll vote on a new board president. Police say stylists at a hair salon in Brighton likely saved the life of a domestic violence survivor. About three weeks ago, the woman was applying for a job at the salon in Brighton. She was out front finishing her application and staff reported hearing a bang and a scream. I see a man grabbing our, you know, the woman who's here for this interview and he is trying to yank her up and she's screaming, she's asking for help. And so I'm able to get down behind her and I'm about right here and I am physically holding this girl by the waist. And I start screaming for somebody to call the cops. The women at Rumor Salon also blocked the doors to keep the man inside. He was able to punch through the glass in a security door and got out. Police later arrested Orlando Handy. He's still in jail facing assault and kidnapping charges. Zach Goldich had never called 911 until the night of July 20th, 2012. He called 911 that night and he called his mother to tell her that he'd been shot at a movie theater in Aurora. Ten years later, he has found a new definition for the word hero. He says it's not about coming to the rescue, it's about being present. Looking back sometimes allows us to move forward. It's part of growing up. Inside Firehouse 17 in Highlands Ranch, Zach Goldlich talks about the summer he was 17. You know, I was 17 when this happened, and I know little of the world. I know, I knew about football, and I knew about high school. And, you know, you, I, I'm, I was just a kid learning about the world, and I learned a lot, um, just how people can, can reach out and the physical presence of somebody being there. Teenage Zach went to the movies that July night and nearly died. He was shot in the neck. Never saw an ambulance, never saw a fire truck. Um, maybe that was because of you know, how far I had ran away. Um, and maybe it was, it was pure just like not, not looking up and, and seeing them. But at the end of the day, I, I never saw them. 
Some road workers got him into a police car and he was rushed to the hospital. The memories pop up every single day. Um, how frequent they pop up just kind of depends on what, what's happening, who I'm talking to, what I'm talking about. Um, but I've, I've learned to live with it and I'm, I grow with it. Grow with it. For years, growing meant playing. Football was the center of Zach's life, from Gateway High School to CSU and the NFL, the dream achieved. All of his success, though, came with a resume. I know early on it was, it was, that was a tough concept for me to grasp. It was something that I, I tended to push away. Um, I didn't really know how to handle that, you know, the significance of it and the real meaning of it. And, you know, 10 years later, I looked back at that and it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty incredible because that day, yet tragic, showed a lot of good. I mean, the goodness of people he knew and didn't know. They were there for a teenager and they are a part of him. I read a quote one time and it said, if you're not inspired by your own story, then maybe you need to start writing. And you know, there's something that you need to start doing. The teenage football player is now a first responder, fully aware and prepared for the next tragedy. I know it's not going to happen the way we, we trained for it, um, but I, I have empathy for those people, um, and I think that's where I will be able to help the most. The gift of time, it's giving Zach the chance to be his best self. My buckets are filled being able to do this job, and so, you know, just continuously being better than I was yesterday um, and, and doing it with a smile, you know, doing it with effort, discipline, gratitude, and empathy. On Saturday, the 720 Foundation will host the first annual Heroes Journey 5K Run Walk. The course goes through Aurora City Center and culminates at the 720 Memorial Reflection Garden. And this run will support the Zach Goldlich Opportunity Scholarship for a high school student in Aurora to achieve a college degree. His story is such a, a reminder that everyone that we met then is in a different phase of life now. Right. 100%. 10 years is a long time. 10 years is a long time. He's engaged. I mean, he's moving forward in different areas of his life. But um, this is always a part of his story. And he's finally, I think, reached a new acceptance to that part of his story. He realizes the power that it has now for other people, as opposed to just being something that depletes him when he tells it. Right. Yeah. Empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy. He has that. At midnight, Tomorrow, there will be a vigil to honor the victims of the Aurora Waterwise Garden. There's also a remembrance event, lots of them planned this weekend. On Saturday, events all day to honor the victims' lives, including a formal reception and reflection ceremony at 1.30, and live music with special remembrance on the Aurora City Hall Green Lawn. Motorists are always going to be price motivated. They're just going to stop where they see the cheapest gas. There are not many places selling gas for under $4 a gallon in our state. There's something going on in Firestone. 